If you're watching this, that means you and I both have no life. Insanity seeped in faster than any of us could have expected. We've been trying to write our script for what feels like weeks. I just couldn't take it anymore and had to get out. I tried to hurl myself through what I thought was a window but turned out to be a mirror. And now Mateo's pissed at me because apparently Ikea no longer makes that model. They still make it. The chuckle buckle is still available, but not in orange beige. Mateo says they still make it. The chucking buck nuts, but it's not in beige. Unless you're willing to have it imported from Holland. You want to pay to have it imported from Holland? Let me out of here! And couldn't you have at least flushed first? You can't be trusted with your freedom just yet. But if you are appropriately remorseful, we will consider sliding a pancake underneath the door for your dinner. I cannot guarantee butter or syrup because it'll stain my carpet. I just washed it. Mateo can't guarantee butter and syrup because the hallway carpet. Majama. Hi. Welcome once again to Majama Jams, where we, Majama, jam about a particular movie. <laughs> particular movie. Yes. And as always, today's choice comes from the Italian. We'll have to change that soon. But another tasty one from the decade we know as the 80s. Yes. Matteo. Yes. What is today's entry? Today's entry is uh, that I forgot one thing, so hold on. Today's entry is, uh, it starts with uh, story time. Gather around or stay there. Um, I can't move where the shot goes out of focus. Yeah. So, way back when, in, uh, oh God, about 30 years ago, I used to go to London, which is in England, to purchase uh, VHSs which is a long thing that is, uh, it doesn't exist almost anymore. Whatever. What does VHS stand for? Video... <laughs> Video home system, something like that. Video no one knows. I don't Even know. he doesn't know. It's, yeah. And uh, there was this gigantic store, the Virgin Megastore, where they had tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, movies that I've never seen before. So... My, you might say you were a virgin to them. I still am. To what? Everything. So, um, since there was no interweb, I had to gamble and uh, look at these movies and literally judging a book by its cover or a DVD by its cover, um, deciding which one could have been worth it to, to purchase without knowing anything about them. Give me a break, guy. I need a hand here. So, uh, towards the end of the 80s, I purchased, based solely on its cover, Great. front and back, Great. Terror Vision. And uh, little did I know that the fact that I picked uh, this movie because of the cover and the title will play a role into the movie of today. So, how this movie got started. Technical Nicolau, the direct, writer-director who started in uh, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as an audio recorder, and then he started to edit movies like Tourist Trap and, and a bunch of other movies, Ask Charles Band, uh, I would like to direct. And Charles Band had that poster. Nothing else. And the title, Terror Vision. Just an eye on a satellite? Yes. Real quick, Charles Band is for the Charles people Charles Band at home. is uh, a god 
he produced uh, uh, tons of movies, uh, which uh, usually his brother uh, Richard uh, uh, scores them. He's a Roger. He's, he's a kind of like a Roger Corman. Uh, let's say about twenty years later, it just like is a more. And then it was a first uh, um, Empire production, and then now is a Full Moon. So Charles Band to pull out this poster and say, "I have this one that I think that is a good idea." And Ted Nicolau saw the poster and instantly thought of a comedy. Wow, a real live monster! I told you. Did you see that? He looked right at my studs and cooled out. This dude's into metal. He's so barfy. Pretty much, he told everybody, dial up to eleven. Anything you do. Just I be go overboard. It doesn't matter how absurd and silly it may be. It has to be just like tonally exaggerated. Jesus, what the hell was that? Man, I've never seen anything like that before. Stanley, what is going on? What the heck was that noise? Where's my workout show? And um, they tour swingers' houses uh, in Los Angeles to base the set uh, um, that was eventually built. And uh, he had uh, the wonderful and, alas, passed on John Beaker to build uh, the creature. And the only direction that gave him is make him look really frightening and really stupid. So they made this totally insane movie where everybody was encouraged to just like go ballistic because Nicolao said, uh, I don't want the audience uh, to like these people because they're all gonna die. And so you cannot actually get grow fond. It was the downfall of um, David Geffen's produced uh, Little Shop of Horrors because he followed the faithfully the play and in which uh, the two protagonists uh, die. And uh, people hated it because they were invested into in, in them. And it's so- also the downfall of my girl. Yes. Which I haven't seen, but I know that those bastards had the guts to kill off everyone's favorite yes. Home Alone eight-year-old. Even funnier, in uh, Italy, Home Alone came out as Mamma ho perso l'aereo, which means uh, Mommy, I missed the flight. You guys have no subtlety. No. But My Girl came out as Papà ho trovato un amico, which means uh, Daddy, I found a new friend, which metrically was exactly like the translation of the translate the, the Italian title of Home Alone. So everybody say, oh, it's another comedy. Uh... Wait till <laughs> they got around to the good son. Y- yes, but now, that, that was way. Past. We have not yet done the actual synopsis. We've led up we to yes, it, so. I told you there was story time. So the synopsis so, is uh, this. A couple of uh, swingers invites uh, another couple of uh, would-be swingers in their pad just after they installed a huge satellite dish that was supposed to capture everything. The problem is that it captures uh, a little more than they bargained for, which was this uh, creature from uh, the planet Pluto. Pluton? Pluton, Pluto, Pluto. Something like that. Plutonian. Whatever. (laughs) from a far distant uh, uh, planet, which is uh, a creature that has uh, insatiable appetite uh, and uh, apparently strength with no limits. And um, only the kid of the family realizes that there is this monster that comes and goes uh, from the television through something, because it was energy, pretty much. It was yeah. disposed as energy, so it's, uh, uh, it's capturing the satellite dish. And uh, since they are a TV pretty much in every room. It can come and go despite its size, which is gigantic. And uh, one by one, he picks every single uh, person who apparently can still live uh, inside of him, or at least he can- Use them like puppets almost. Yeah, he can use them a puppet with their voice uh, and um, c- 
Connolly character. And, uh, and that's it for a movie that takes almost entirely place in one house. Uh, yes, I was <laughs> thinking it. it's uh, it they they set up their little swingers house. It's got a very eccentric, visually appealing vibe to it, and we spend pretty much the whole movie in there. It's very yeah. economic. They do a good breakup though. You get the pool room, you get the oh, yeah. bunker. For a house, is very well. Uh, uh, crafted and defined, you know. Uh, yeah, and making them a rich um, family, you get to be able to expand on all the different rooms and stuff. Yes, and uh, and with this absurd, uh, uh, almost pornographic statues uh, and, yeah. uh, and the art paintings, uh, yeah. paintings and you know, what just hit me, and hopefully you guys know this reference, but this was like a ninety-minute version of Soundgarden's classic Black Hole Sun video. Now, if you guys don't know this, I really can't continue on, but <laughs> the suburbia gone darkly cartoonified, even without the monster, like you said, everyone's performance dialed up to 11. Uh, Black Hole Sun videos, a lot of those, yeah, and kind of CGI smiles. Uh, it reminded me of that, and what Matthew was saying is that kind of eerie Indiana, uh, what was the other name? Okay, like a modern day adult swim parody of Indian and. Indiana Jones <laughs> of Erie, Indiana, because for the 80s, they're playing, I mean, they're playing obviously stereotypes of people who were around in those days, but it almost seems like a stereotypical character that you would portray now. Yeah. It's so over the top. Also, I'm pretty sure the boyfriend played a homeless man on Seinfeld. Here you go, brother. Some food for you. Thank you. You're a good man. Bless you. Now, you're going to be here in an hour. Where am I going? All right. Sure. <laughs> Wait up. Name, please. Rusty. Rusty. You know, I once knew a horse named Rusty. No offense. <laughs> All right, now take it down to the end of the block. Make a control turn and bring her back. Let's see what you got. Okay, ready and go. Get up. Good form. All right, pace yourself because you're gonna have to do this all day for very little money. <laughs> hey, what's he doing? I think he's stealing our rickshaw. I loved the spirit, tone, and visuals more than I think I loved the overall execution because yep. I I don't want to say bored, but I definitely I kind of realized that we were in the house and it was just a monster. And then I think after the parents go, we spent a lot of time with the sister, brother, and Far rocker. enough, I think once they start talking to him and teaching him things, then I was like, okay, I'm kind of a little past this. What, what's going to happen? And you would think that that would be kind of like the elevation of, okay, what's going to happen next in our story? Um, but I think also taking the parents out of it, you this the classic. Oh shit! The parents are coming home. We gotta hide it from them, or they gotta right. this and that, or we gotta clear up, clean up the house before they get home. But since they were so uh, irresponsible and not giving a shit about the kids, you don't really have that worry. But at the same time, it's just a kind of stereotypical story arc or right. trope that you're gonna have to worry the, about. The thing that I like is that when uh, the uh, extraterrestrial savior arrives, uh, uh, that he gets killed. Yeah. Very well. Let's go. Son of a bitch. Medusa! Not so fast, asshole! Yeah! Ugly bastard! So. Which is, uh, I like the fact that they actually expand on, okay, you know, we're gonna, we can bring your parents back, we can go take him alive, we can capture the alien yes. alive, bring him back, we can extract genes from him, oh no, no, it's not gonna be clones, it's gonna be your real parents, we can do this, and then he dies okay. on top of that. So I thought it was cool enough because you yes. give everyone hope that, okay, everything can go back to normal. Nope. Right in the nick of time, huh? You killed him! Spaceman! Spaceman, please don't die! Hey, what's with you guys? I just saved your ass. How about a little gratitude? You killed him! You killed him, you stupid bitch! It was our only hope! I, I I fell in love with this movie because of its quirkiness. I, I understand is not the most perfect uh, movie um, ever, but uh, I think that it's it has uh, enough uh, this odd quality of 
what the hell am I watching? Yeah. And well, it's Pee Wee's Playhouse kind of. Yeah. Uh, yes. It, the set is very much like a children's, um, you know, like coming to this wacky world. Uh, the swinger thing is interesting because it. Only, I know they, they design the house, like you say, in tone with what a swinger would be, but it's almost more like I said, a cartoon playhouse. Yes, but it also seems like there's so much emphasis on that fact. The sex. Or the, the erotic the, art. The, yeah, the erotic art. Remember, and, the production designer was Italian, so yeah. <laughs> what, you, what, you, we have sex constantly everywhere. <laughs> the, the moment you say swinger or something like that is instantly yeah, flashed all over the walls. Yes. Okay. We've talked about in the past the American prudism versus what those freaks are doing over in Europe. Running through the streets with the genitals flip flopping without a care in the GD world. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Totally the, the visually. The world of Gina Davis. The world of Gina Davis. GD world. Sorry. As far as the jokes, this one kind of the jokes were within. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't no. jokes so much as more absurdities based on the situation. It, it was a comedic tone uh, rather than uh, a joke, 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 yeah. joke, joke. Um, it is the whole situation is pretty absurd uh, in general. There are a couple of moments uh, that are genuinely funny, but looks go uh, looks good. Doesn't look like they had to skimp in their vision. No, uh, not at all. The monster's and, great. The monster is fantastic. Uh, just slimy and just a fucking mess, just a glob of flesh. Uh, they kept on dousing the monster with uh, slime. Uh, yes, uh, KY gel or yeah. something like that and everything. It yeah. was very, everyone was drip. I love the, um, well, I love also the grandpa's line of uh, oh, wait. taking care of business. Taking care of business. Uh, and then when he pops up in the bed, too. Yes. Just, uh, no, just taking care of business. Hi. Yes, sir. Remember, kids. You do your thing, we do ours. Mother, that is so disgusting. Night, night now, kids. Try and keep it down, will you? Thanks. Me out. Have any of you seen Gramps? Right here, honeybee. Just taking care of business. Oh, Gramps, that is totally sicko. It's almost a sarcastic movie. It almost makes yeah. makes fun uh, intentionally of um, all the beats uh, about it. But I I've always the, the first time that I saw it, uh, I say, "What the hell am I watching?" Why did they film in Italy? Yeah, why did they, why would anyone do that? That was the, well, I guess it was cheaper. Um, they went uh, into what it was originally Dino Città, which was the Dino De Laurentiis uh, attempt of doing uh, uh, Cine Città, which was the studio system in the 60s, 50s and the 60s in Italy. Then Dino De Laurentiis did uh, Dino Città. Um, it went bankrupt and uh, he left. And uh, rumor has it that he actually took away uh, everything copper tubes, pipes, uh, electricity. So you had uh, an empty shell uh, and um, Empire uh, production, which was the Charles Band uh, venture before Full Moon, um, occupied uh, those uh, movies. And this uh, and uh, uh, Troll were kind of like a um, test run to see if they could work over there. Okay. Um, and this brought American actors. And they brought American actors and they brought uh, American directors. Uh, and that's about it because the vast majority of other people of the cast were Italian uh, and uh, the communication was hilarious. And uh, Troll never really took on the infamy of Troll 2, huh? No, Troll is uh, a... It's competent. It's competent. It's, it's, it's a completely different adventure with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Is she the Troll? Not that I know Which of. Which is funny no. because the woman from the second one in the... Um, the garden lady one with the glasses almost looks like a Elaine knockoff, somewhat. Oh yeah, the, okay. the, yes. to a small degree. And the name of the protagonist of Troll is Harry Potter. Really? Yeah. Sheer coincidence. I mean, I guess the Harry Potter there are Harry Potter in the. Is in J.K. Rowling a troll fan? I don't know. There are trolls in Harry Potter. Are there? True. <laughs> Marty, move! Hey! Hey, Ray! 
can't do it, man. I can't. It's just, it's a turn off. Like if Mateo had to watch a Russell Crowe movie, and I really like your answer of, but he's very talented. I didn't say that. I said I didn't like him. I can't do the Harry Potter man. What the hell? I also really like the scene of her pushing the kid into the yes. bunker. I meant to bring that up. We yeah, got the asking... full on Matthew losing his shit. Sherman Potterman, I am fed up. If you're too big of a sissy to spend the night alone, then you just spend the night with Grandpa. No, Mom. No, Get Mom. in there. Mom. Get in. Dad, no. is it all right if Sherman spends the night with you? Mom, please let me in. Come on, Mom. That's really the real test, is that if Matthew does the, the monthly yes. wheeze and the tears, and then we all collectively... <laughs> uh, contagiously lose our shit yes and uh, also it, it anticipates the uh, tremors the the scene that um, michael gross and uh reba um, uh, mcintyre they have uh, they, they you know that they are gun lovers but then it pans <laughs> And here, Grandpa has uh, weapons uh, everywhere, and yeah. C4, and and uh, grenades. I guess they they do go through a good amount of the arsenal. Yes, and 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 again, for for being once again, uh, which seems uh, oftentimes a bad uh, label, a, a B movie. Um, Hey, there's people who live by them. That, that's exactly what I expect from a B-movie, if you will. Yeah, plus there's a style and there's a vision concretely yes. throughout the entire 90 minutes. Yes, and it's uh, and um, Gary Graham, the father, Stanley. Looks like I Ted Raimi a little bit. <laughs> he is. Okay, no, is, uh, uh, Pamer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Pamer. Yes. They're always closely related. But he is uh, Bud the Chud. Really? Yes. Wait, who is Bud? Pamer? No. 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 <laughs> this... <laughs> Gary Graham. Who was also the father? This week yes. with the change. Yes. Really? Hey, Is that Rick Mortis? Who was also in the Phantom of the Opera, uh, no, the Phantom of the Paradise, sorry, which is Brian De Palma's take. Once again, on... once again, where else are you going to go for this? That the movie you just watched, which you probably haven't heard of, Terror Vision, is the guy, the Chud, and Bud uh, the Chud, uh, too. Really, really, seems desperate. Probably they would go on any other people who are talking, I mean, <laughs> podcast that talks about these movies. And uh, Mary Warrenov, uh, most famously, was in uh, Eating Raul. And she was actually approached by uh, Ted Nicolau to play Medusa. And she she read she read the script and she said, "That is the part that everybody would ask me. I would like to be the mom." To which, Danny Gras said, "Hey, if you want to be in my movie, you can do whatever you want." So tell me, Raquel, how long have you and Stanley been swinging? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, we've only tried it a couple of times. It's so hard to meet nice people through the classifieds. And she embraces it because she is a, a, like a, um, a Garrett Graham. Uh, she knows camp. She knows yeah. how to be exaggerated. Yeah. Oh, Tresimo. <laughs> Pleasure Palace, here we come. Fine. He did not write this. He did write it. He did write this, yes. okay. Written directed by That's so why I keep thinking Freak, because Always it helps. just seems like my, this is yes. my total vision. Uh, it's just fucking weird. I, I want to set, set, sell a certain tone, and then you just kind of, you do it. Yeah. And you have this whole world to kind of play in. When you get the ampersand there, written and directed by, always the best, every time. Or the worst. Yeah, I think sometimes even you'll, uh, again, Tommy in the room, the fact that he was at the helm of all of that made that funny. Had someone stepped in to make the room better, we might not have had the shrieking, screaming, midnight cult sensation. Yes, because I'm saying for, the room is the worst, but also being the best. I'm just saying that you have a much better chance for the gorgeousness of an unblocked vision when writer director is both there. Obviously, we, as we learned, yeah, there's a million yeah. obstacles on the way to creative fulfillment. But and and especially in a movie like this, where the production is uh, much smaller. Uh, in terms of uh, 
they are less uh, CEOs and uh, yeah. But then again, you, you have, imagine you have a more uh, un. I mean, you have the most sincere and honest uh, expression of yeah. the director versus the movies. What I keep thinking this is too, just like with there was definitely a decent budget for this. Yeah. And how do you sell this uh, in a trailer or to someone who's going to give you money for it? Oh, wow, what a drag. How do you pitch it? What do you, do you give it like right. a general idea for what the feel of it's going to be? Like just a wacky sci-fi, horror, absurd comedy? Or, or how do you... This is also the, the, the beauty of this, and this is why it makes it so unique, is that it's almost undescribable. Because they tell you it's a comedy. To boil it down, kind of. Yeah, even, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, yes, to, to, to just like, pitch it as a sale. I'm going to say something very bold. I don't think it is a comedy, and it's not without its laughs. And I, I, I can't I say. I think you're I looking can't. for, like, here's a joke. Oh, that's a joke. Oh, that's a joke. As I'm not even to, saying here's that. Here's an absurd comedic situation. Oh yeah. And I don't mean that as an insult. I don't mean that to to put it down. I don't mean that. Uh, I don't mean that in any bad way. I just feel like, almost like a, a sci-fi. It kind of reminds me of the "It's a Good Life" sequel in the Twilight Zone movie. What? Uh, with by Joe Dante, right? Uh, yeah, a remake, not a sequel. Is a is a remake? Yes. No, it's supposed to be a continu- well. Okay, okay, not a literal continuation, but it's kind of the idea. Of- no, dude, you got me excited. So, if there's an actual sequel to The Good Life, that's my all-time favorite Twilight Zone episode. All I wanted to do was listen to Perry Como on my birthday. My God. And then yeah. uh, the scene where he's watching the dinosaurs fight, and then the the older woman is like, "Oh my God, just I love it. We're putting it on after this. Outer <laughs> limits. We don't do anything but watch stuff in here, people." Holy tomato. Ah, brain shot. Belly down, soldier. The geeks aren't through with you yet. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, 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 hey. Will you guys grow up? So, do you guys think this was worth putting writing off for? Yes, I do. Okay. (laughs) And actually, I would give uh, this... uh, We're doing the votes, people. Doing the ratings. I would go... This is the gimmick. I go with two. At the same time. Can you do it? No way. Clearly. No way. Oh, I thought so you... oh missed both. I mean, they both went in. Yes, thank you. <laughs> they both went in as swiftly as a Michael Jordan. I, I think it's worth watching it. It's uh, It has uh, more pluses than minuses. And it's, um, it's, it's fun. I'm going to go with... A right in the middle of the road on either scale, whether it's ours or the traditional one, numero tres, because, uh, yes, I definitely didn't dislike it. Don't get the wrong idea. But I thought uh, a lot of gorgeous stuff, visuals, and idea that I just personally wanted to see come to a little more fruition, but uh, definitely a blast indicative of its time period. One. Two. Man, they're all just going right in. And three for me. Amazing. Right in the middle for Jason. That's excellent. Excellent. Uh, same. I'm going to go with three as well. Uh, very enjoyable watch. I would watch it again. Uh, but I could use more of... Focus, I feel like, for me. I guess focus. I'm trying to think of the, the, the word. Maybe not focus, but... Um... I think our type of brains, we just you give us a certain red meat and we expect... Everyone yeah, is nothing right. before. It's amazing. Majama. Majama. A lot of ideas, a lot of fun ideas, all kind of mushed together. And while they gel into a f- family being attacked by aliens, you don't have the classic, this kid is our main protagonist we're following him through right. the movie where we're gonna hide well, from the parents everything to make sure everything okay him and the sister are gonna team up and you have all those elements but it doesn't feel completely that way but then again like you said it was planned from the start that the family wouldn't survive so maybe you don't necessarily need or want that yes so uh overall tally the scoreboard uh pretty knows. pretty good we, we, we div- don't have a scoreboard right it was just a metaphorical phrase yes but uh who the hell knows this Different fucking format every week. It uh, doesn't matter. 
the good thing is that we have pushed aside having to write another script for another couple hours. Yeah. Now, does anyone have a piece of paper so I can write something down? Um. Uh... Hitchcock uh, one day was criticized by some doctors because he had an actor performing an injection of some other actors and uh, kind of like it did like this uh, when they say no it should be an, at an angle or something so from that point on he always had a doctor on the set uh, for every single time they were doing something and they say is this how it should be that i respected immensely because of course uh, it kills the illusion if you see somebody who doesn't know the basics ready for your shot exactly and actually it was a doctor on set that actually properly broke jimmy stewart's leg for rear window yes now now what what exactly i'm like oh christ 